following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report, TV and radio. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Live from the PWR studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is the Pro Wrestling Report Post Show on Blog Talk Radio with your host, Damian Nelson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Post Show for WWE Money in the Bank 2012. Damian Nelson coming to you here for the PWR studios with David Hero, the co-host with the most. And uh, Money in the Bank is in the books. We've got two men who now have briefcases to take along with them and cash in at some point for a WWE and a World Heavyweight Championship opportunity. David Hero, a solid pay-per-view overall, a pay-per-view that featured almost as many matches that were unadvertised as those that were advertised, but the opening matchup was for the SmackDown opportunity, the World Heavyweight Championship opportunity. As you know, eight men participating in that matchup, Cody Rhodes, Tyson Kidd, Tensai, Damian Sandow, Santino Morella, Dolph Ziggler, Christian, and Sin Cara. Winning that Money in the Bank matchup would be Dolph Ziggler. The fans wanted it. It was well delivered. It was well executed. And Dolph Ziggler is now Mr. Money in the Bank on the SmackDown side of things. David Hero. You know what? It's what the fans wanted, and they got it. You know what? My goodness, that match was now three hours ago, and it was so good, but you forgot how good it was because of everything else that happened throughout the evening. I thought, for the most part, everybody in that match, with the exception of Sin Cara, showcased their talents and abilities, and uh, what a great way to start off the show with uh, those SmackDown superstars setting the bar pretty high. You said with the exception of Sankara? Yeah, you know what? The the stuff he was doing, I don't know. I mean, maybe I missed some amazing stuff, but uh, overall, I thought he was more of a liability in the match. Really? Wow. I love the spot that he ended up taking, though, uh, with the powerbomb by Tensai to the ladder, uh, which pretty much took about the matchup. I thought that was well done. I was I was actually somewhat impressed with Sankara tonight. I think it may have been his best showing since being in WWE. Well, for me, he was just, we, we've seen it all. He's done it all. He's not getting over. Um, yeah. I don't really think that the fans cared a whole lot. And he was more like the human uh, dart, I guess you could say. The human lawn dart for most of those guys tonight. Speaking of getting over, this may have been Tensai's night. Tensai, a monster in that matchup tonight. You look at the things he did, the people he tossed around, and the dominance he exhibited in that SmackDown Money in the Bank matchup. This may have been Tensai's coming. And I think we'll find out tomorrow on Raw when and if we see Tensai that people will learn to appreciate this beast. You know, he he did. He had a great showing. He was dominant. He was destroying people left and right. I mean, if you saw the way he tossed Dalton Ziggler over the announce table, that, that was, was amazing. That was an oh-my-God moment. I mean, and then, of course, you got the spot where um, he's given the big power bomb to Sin Cara to the ladder that does not bend at all. Right. And just, you know, just beating everybody up. It was his big – it was the match he needed. I, obviously, I would have rather seen him win it. I think it would have been – uh, a huge surprise, a big shock if he would have won it. But you know what, Dolph Ziggler, you know, he, he's super talented. Him and Cody had more of a falling out. That's going to be an interesting program. Those two guys, that, that's the feud I think that we need to see is Cody versus Dolph Ziggler. How about the aggression that we saw from Cody Rhodes tonight? I mean, he was there to win it, ultimately came up short. But uh, I think we saw a little attitude, if you will, from Cody Rhodes tonight. And dare I say, believability from Cody Rhodes tonight. Well, yeah, you know you know what? There was just so much going on. It, it, it's hard to pinpoint any of this stuff that was happening in that SmackDown match. I mean, you had Damian Sandow, who established himself as, as, as a big-time player. Uh, you had Tensai, who had his big coming-out party. You had Tyson Kidd, who was showing the universe how talented he is. Santan, uh, Santino got his comedy spots in. Uh, Christian was kind of like the ring general in that match, making yeah. sure that the guys were where they were supposed to be. Uh, it, it, it was good. It was solid all the way around. I was shocked it opened the show 
But, I mean, as we saw, it set up a future storyline down the road by, you know, the way it ended. Let's uh, not forget the talent of a Tyson kid in that matchup. He delivered as well. We knew going into this, as a matter of fact, I believe I said on primetime last night that this would be the standout match of the night. It was not the case, but it was still a great match. But a match that at the beginning of its near 20-minute duration started off a little, uh, dare I say, sloppy, where some things didn't quite go as planned, and it was obvious that way in the matchup. That didn't take away from it at the end of the day. Uh, but I think the stars coming out of this match, obviously Dolph Ziggler, uh, as I said, Tensai, Cody Rhodes, were very... How does, that, how does that make you feel to say Tensai was a star in tonight's match? Oh, well, it makes me feel damn good because you guaranteed to everybody on primetime last night that Tensai would win money in the bank, and he didn't. I didn't guarantee anything. Oh, you I did. Booked it I heard that it. If I was booking, that's how I would have had it go. And you know what? It was. It almost happened. I thought the Santino thing with the Cobra and the Scared of Heights was corny, cheesy, and dumb. But as you said, he did play his. Uh, he played his role very well. Everybody in this matchup really did have a role to play. I would say that there were similar roles played by both Cody Rhodes and Dolph Ziggler, but I think going into this matchup, not a single fan expected anyone else to win but one of those two men, and as the match progressed, they really, really started rooting for Dolph Ziggler. Yes, they did. They, you know what? The fans love Dolph Ziggler. They, they love his look, his attitude, his in-ring ability, everything about him. I mean, and of course, it, it doesn't hurt that he's involved with Zack Ryder and a bunch of his YouTube videos, so that gets him a little more over as well. But, you know, uh, Dolph Ziggler is the guy that the fans want to see do well. They want to cheer for him. Did Dolph Ziggler need this? Um, I don't know if he needed it. But he definitely got it. I, I, I think there could have been, like, you know, one or two other guys in that match that could have used it. I mean, Cody, I think, needed it more than Dolph Ziggler, but... Maybe now they feel Dolph Ziggler is uh, is ready. Well, that was the SmackDown version of the Money in the Bank matchup, and uh, we also had a Raw version of the Money in the Bank matchup, this one featuring all former champions, the Big Show, Kane, Chris Jericho, John Cena, and one more former champion that returned tonight after a two-month absence at Money in the Bank on pay-per-view and inserted himself as the fifth member of that matchup. A, as you said, David Hero, all grown-up, endorsed superstar in The Miz. Yeah, the, you know what? Pretty amazing. The Miz shows up, looks good, looks refreshed. You know, has, you know, he, he looks more mature, a little bit older, new, a, a, a new hairstyle. Yeah. How about that? He, he looks like he now truly is Hollywood, and not just some bratty frat boy. And when he spoke about being a former Money in the Bank ladder match winner, being a former WWE champion, there was a point, a, a, a bit more, more believability to his words tonight than I think anything we've seen him say or do thus far in WWE. The Miz really brought it tonight, um, really, really did bring it tonight, and then involved in that matchup. The five men involved in that match, again, another match where they all sort of play their roles. I question, though, the ultimate result. Not a surprising ultimate result, as the man who walked out of the Raw Money in the Bank ladder match with the briefcase was none other than John Cena. Now, I think at the end of the day, I think at the end of the day, whenever that day is, this will all make a ton of sense. Because as we talked about on Primetime David Hero, this seemed like the gateway that was needed for the fans to accept John Cena getting back into the WWE title picture, a picture which he has not been in for a while, a very long time, actually. And, uh, you know... For a year. We've heard from a lot of you on Twitter. Again, we're at PWR Show on Twitter. Not a lot of people happy with this, but... Again, you heard the reaction when John Cena won, and it was a bit of an interesting finish. Some are questioning whether or not that was the way it was supposed to be. Be that as it may, the fans loved it when that uh, that uh, carabiner broke and the briefcase fell uh, as John Cena and the Big Show were battling on top of the supersized ladder. Brilliant. It was a good finish. How could, they not, how could they not cheer for John Cena? He was in the match with four other heels. Yeah. He was the only baby face. Yep. I mean, Kane's kind of a tweener. He, you know, he goes, you know, back and forth, whatever. But you're in there with Jericho. Well, he's a tweener, but more of a heel. And you got Miz and, and Big Show, of course. I mean, Chris Jericho, he's damn lucky that that uh, chain didn't snap when he was swinging back and forth. How bad could that have been for business? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but 
great performance by Jericho, great performance by The Miz, smart utilization of the big show in this matchup. And uh, Kane was just sort of there, but he played a role as well. This one going just around 20 minutes as well, but longer than I expected. It seemed shorter than it actually was. But as I said, that hot crowd in Phoenix firmly behind John Cena, who was not shown or mentioned really before the matchup. They built up the anticipation. John Cena had to win that match, which was the final match on the card, not the WWE World Heavyweight Championship matchups, which is stirring up a little bit of controversy on the interwebs. But, again, it made sense because, and you look back at the three hours, they told the right story at the right times with the way the matches were set up. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, interesting, money in the bank, how how the SmackDown match was so good, so much athleticism, you know, the young guys working hard, and then in the Raw match, you know what? The veterans, they put on a hell of a match also. Both matches completely different. Um, but at the end of the day, Dalton Ziggler and John Cena, they have briefcases to be toting around for, who knows, for the next day or for the next year. Absolutely. And there were two championship matchups on this card as well, the first of which being for the World Heavyweight Championship. Sheamus defending against... Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio comes out and uh, does his shtick. I did like how when they did the in-rings, R- R- Ricardo uh, also did the in-ring introduction for the championship matchup. Well done. However, this match followed that hot SmackDown match, and the fans not necessarily as into this match as I would have expected them to have been. Sheamus ultimately getting the win over Alberto Del Rio, a solid wrestling match. Let's not lose sight of that. Sheamus has been delivering in that squared circle for the last several months he did so again tonight against a veteran in Alberto Del Rio. He came up short, though, to Del Rio in his efforts to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. But a man would cash in, or at least attempt to cash in, his Money uh, in the Bank briefcase that he had won in the match what? before. Dolph Let's Ziggler comes out. Let's not jump ahead. That match with Del Rio and Sheamus was good. It was a fight. Both guys beat each other up. Not nearly as much as Punk and Daniel Bryan Danielson did, but for the people that complained about how slow of a match ADR and Sheamus was, it's because you saw the human car crash the match earlier where guys were flying all over the place. Sheamus has come so far in the last couple of years, and it's working with guys like Del Rio that has helped him become a better champion. That match, I tell you, if the Punk... Daniel Bryan Danielson match wasn't on tonight's pay per view. I would say Sheamus and Del Rio would have been the best match of the night. Perhaps, but I don't think so in the fans' eyes because there was no crowd interaction. The crowd wasn't into it. But it's because they were so exhausted from the first match. You take all the ladders and gimmicks and stuff out of the two Money in the Bank matches. Okay, that's one thing. But as far as a pure wrestling match, if you just want to watch two guys have false finishes and, and watch the you know the baby face shine and the heel get his feet and everything else, that was a textbook match. Dolph Ziggler did not get his chance to cash in. The bell never rang as he is greeted with a brogue kick by Sheamus after Alberto Del Rio beat down Sheamus after the matchup. Again, another cash in tease, but again, that's why this pay-per-view and this concept of money in the bank is so fun because you just never know and uh, you expect at any time for that person to cash in that money in the bank briefcase. Ziggler still has that opportunity. He did not cash in against Sheamus tonight. Damien, please tell me that the IWC's heart didn't stop when they thought he cashed it in and he took that bro kick. I mean, I popped loud. I laughed. I was like, oh, my God, fantastic. Even yeah, Linda K couldn't believe it. I think they covered it well for the TV viewing audience because one of the commentators said, the bell never rang, the bell never rang, the bell never rang, and then immediately cleaned it up. So I don't think the, the fans in the audience definitely probably thought he got uh, shafted. But I don't think the fans at home did. I mean, obviously, you were laughing, so you weren't paying attention to what was happening. You're, actually, you're probably listening on mute, weren't you? Booker T, Michael Cole. Oh, you know, you know what's funny is my brother came over to watch pay-per-view. He's like, who is that? I go, Booker T's like, oh, that's brutal. You know I mean? <laughs> you know, it, it, yeah, it was kind of hard to it was It was hard to watch that way, yes. 
in a match that was for the WWE Championship, a match that was made a no-disqualification matchup earlier today by WWE, a match that featured a special guest referee and AJ, a match that went 30 minutes, almost 30 minutes, a great wrestling exhibition, especially after AJ gets taken out early on to return later on in the matchup. But even with her there, she did nothing but add to this matchup while really doing not much of anything, which is an amazing accomplishment for WWE and an amazing way to have CM Punk retain the WWE Championship over Daniel Bryan. A different feel to this match for sure, but man, these two <laughs> delivered kendo sticks, chairs, and ultimately a table, a suplex off the top rope by CM Punk on Daniel Bryan through the table. AJ with the one, two, three. Punk retains the WWE Championship. Amazing match. It, it was. It was an absolutely am- it, it, Listen, as far as I'm concerned, you take, you know, the Triple H Taker match away from WrestleMania, that's match of the year right there. Best really? match I've seen in a long time. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, wow, that's impressive. Those that's high accolades get- from you. Listen, if... Tonight's match between Punk and Daniel Bryan Danielson made me a, fa- a bigger fan of both guys. They wow. and you they tore the house they tore the house down. They beat the crap out of each other. You know those two guys were sitting in the back steaming that they weren't going on last. Uh, it's the WWE Championship match, and they're thinking, you know what? We are going to show the world how good we are. And you know Punk and Daniel Bryan Danielson, two very good close personal friends of each other, says, you know what, I'm going to beat the hell out of you, and you're going to beat the hell out of me, and we're going to have the best match of the night, if not the entire year. And they went out and did exactly that. They stole the show. That was the savage steamboat to the Hogan Andre right tonight. That was a question I was going to ask. You know, people talk about great wrestling matchups. We talk about what should, what shouldn't be the main event. And some of the best wrestling matches that have occurred in the history of the business were not at the top of the card. We're not the headlining match. We're not the main event matchup. They're part of the overall presentation. Had this match ended, this match could have ended the show. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely. It should have ended ended the show. show. Really? That match should have ended, yes. Absolutely. And then what you do is you have John Cena walk out on the ramp hold that briefcase in the air, and just look at CM Punk. Yeah. Don't challenge, plant the seed, let the let the fans decide if they're going to cheer for Superman or for Batman. <laughs> the Dark Knight Shall Rise. Yeah, you know there's a Superman movie coming out uh, in the next year as well. Yes, and I cannot I wait. Sam Punk retains the WWE Championship over... Uh, over um, Daniel Bryan tonight. How about AJ's role, David Hero? She, she obviously gone for a big portion of that matchup. Replacement referee comes out. She was uh, rather ineffective. But that's good, right? Well, yeah. I mean, but all the build of having her as a special guest referee and what is she going to do and who is she going to side with? Yeah. All she did was throw a chair in the middle of the ring to watch both guys beat each other up. But you know what? That's her all she delivery, did. her facial expressions, her everything was perfect. And it what do you was call those kind of facial enough. expressions there, Damien? I'm sorry? What do you call those kind of facial expressions? Well, she was showing her... her, her she was torn between the two oh. men that she loves. Gotcha. I, I wasn't sure what, what you call that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it was perfect. I thought that she was involved just enough in the matchup to not be in the way, but to be significant enough for the hype that went into the matchup. Wonder where this goes with those three people, though, going forward, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, and AJ. I'm sure we'll see tomorrow night on Raw, which is from Las Vegas, Nevada, David Hero. And I'm, uh, on my You're going to be and, there, huh? I'm on my way to Vegas in just a few hours. Hopefully I can uh, catch up with my, my boy Heath Slater, who's celebrating his birthday out there in uh, Las Vegas as well today. And Sparky's going to be out there, too, uh, tomorrow through the rest of the week. I, you I, and Sparky on the strip together? Oh, my good God. No, no, let's get one thing straight. I won't be on the strip. I'll be at the Barbary Coast, Bill's Gambling Hall, all week. I don't go far from there. You know what? what? Honest to God, 
I hope you take some of your Nelson family T-shirts with you, and just hopefully maybe somebody will wear one for you, because you have absolutely terrible luck with that lately. Next matchup we're going to talk about was uh, one of the several matchups that was not expected on the card, but that Hold did on. happen. It was wait, a- wait, wait, wait. Are we really going to waste our time, our energy, our oxygen on those three matches that were added after the pay-per-view was announced? In an effort to give our fans who may not have seen the pay-per-view a full result and analysis on what happened on the pay-per-view, yes. And the first one we're going to talk about is a match that you know what? actually... You, you know what? Linda Kay would love to talk about the primetime players. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Well, come on, get Linda on. No, I, you know, I got, I got things to do. Hold on a second. I'll, hold on I'm a second. We're live on the radio. I'll fill the void, and then Linda will be there to talk once you put her on the phone. Hey, the Dan. tag team matchup, it was the primetime playas versus... Primo and Epico, the crowd dead for this matchup. However, they gave the tag team some time in this tag team matchup. Linda, what did you think of this match? You know what? Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. What do you... <laughs> Linda, either you have a serious cold or there's something I have not known about you. What was that? Wait, wait, what? This is Linda Kay now. Oh, hello, Linda Kay. Hi there. See what happens when you two don't come down to the studio and you have shenanigans together? <laughs> Tag team matchup, primetime players versus Primo and Epico. Your what, crowd was dead for that matchup, but what did you think? Um, well, you know, it was great with AW with that with the mic. I definitely think it added to the match. Um, didn't think their crowd was really into it, but having AW out there, starting up the crowd, definitely brought some heat to it and definitely brought something to the match. Definitely got me more into it, made me laugh a bit. Good, and and you know you're. Uh... Your girl, AJ, heavily involved in that matchup between CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. However, not as involved as many people probably expected her to be. CM Punk retains the WWE Championship. What would you think of that excellent wrestling matchup? It was fantastic. Definitely agree with Dave that it's been my second favorite match, second to take her to the H so far this year. Uh, Just what they put themselves through. I mean, my gosh, I I agree. Like, you know, they were probably just like you didn't, not being able to close out the show, they brought it out, and with AJ's involvement, you know, I agree that she still played a big role by not really being too involved, which I think is really good, but, you know, it, it just lays out that question, what's next? What is she yeah. thinking? What's going to be next between that trio, and what does it have to see? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Linda, for joining us, You're and uh, we will uh, be talking to you again, of course, soon, probably oh, tomorrow night on the Meltdown, of course. Uh, Linda Kay, our social media diva. Continuing talking about WWE Money in the Bank on pay-per-view, the next matchup was an impromptu six-diva tag match. The team of Layla, Caitlin, and Tamina Snuka, I'm calling her Snuka again, going up against Beth Phoenix, Natalia, and Eve. And David, everybody in this matchup only waited for one thing to happen that didn't happen and hasn't happened since the Royal Rumble for Karma to come in and beat some tail. Well, and you know, and, and that right there is the thing. Everyone's waiting for karma, and this was their way of saying, "Hey, guess what? She's nowhere to be found right now." Right? Uh, it, who's to say she might not, you know, still show up at the one thousandth RAW? I mean, that's a week away. That's the that that's the huge show. That's where new angles are going to happen. It's going to have such a huge spotlight. It's supposed to be under such a microscope. That's where you bring out karma and try to make something special happen with her. Absolutely, and it was not tonight, but it was Layla getting the win. Her team of uh, Layla, Kayla, I'm sorry, Caitlin and Tamina getting the pinfall win. Layla uh, gets the credit for that victory in that matchup. Next matchup was a handicap match, and once you hear that, you know exactly who's involved. Yes, indeed, it was Ryback going up against uh, Kurt Hawkins and Tyler Reck. Rex. Uh, he had to do a little bit more work in this matchup than he has in the past. But he finally got the opportunity to see what Ryback is made up to a degree. But, David, it's at a point now where Ryback has to beat somebody who matters for somebody to start caring about him. Well, what's going to happen is that somebody's going to have to come out and challenge him. One of the heels is going to have to come out and say, hey, you know what, try me. But who is that going to be? Because they don't have any strong heels. Right. Right. You know, on either, uh, really on either brand. I mean, the, the strongest heels on SmackDown are Ziggler, Cody, and Del Rio. And on Raw, it's... Daniel Bryan and Big Show, and right now those guys are busy with other things. Yeah, well, we'll see where. Yeah, I just I can't. I mean, I can't. I mean, obviously the Goldberg chance and all that. Do you know what's going to save Ryback? What's going to save Ryback? Put him in a tag team. 
put him in a tag team with somebody. That way he won't be completely exposed, you know, when he does have to eventually do a 10 to 12 minute match. Yeah. He's just not going to squash somebody. I think you put him in a tag team with somebody, I think it changes the whole dynamic of that character. Who would you put him in a tag with? Someone that can work. You know, someone that's creative in the ring that that, that can hide his flaws. I mean, maybe that somebody's going to be Santino because Santino can cover up for, for all of Ryback's deficiencies. Yeah. Good point. Good point indeed. That was WWE Money in the Bank on pay-per-view tonight live. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Do you have the point totals for tonight's pay-per-view by chance? Yeah, the interns just gave them to me a few minutes ago. I haven't looked at it yet, though. You, see, where you know is what? It? That's good, uh, because guess what? I got that email, and I'm looking at it. And it is the email with the hard copy. It's in my hand. They walked into the 230 studio, points. The Nelson family is 145, and that means just one thing. You, Brocephus, are going to be wearing the Super Friends colors on this week's primetime Saturday night. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, that's fine. Go right ahead. Just keep in mind, I haven't replaced Brock Lesnar. I didn't replace... Uh, you I didn't can't replace, replace Brock Lesnar. He's yeah, not yeah. hurt. It doesn't matter. He's not on TV, right? He's No, only if they're injured. I have Zack Ryder rotting away on my team because that dude is never going to be on a pay-per-view again. He was the general manager of Zach Down point, and this nowhere point, to be found tonight. At this point, you have champions, so you're going to get more Curtis, points at the front end. Kurt you Hawkins, were in the lead last year. The other half of the Edgehead gets more pay-per-view matches later, than Zach Ryder. Five points later, there's a trophy sitting in front of me every week on primetime, and I rolled behind me because I beat you. And why you're such a sore loser, I don't know. It matters now. Because you lost last year, you'll lose this year. Yes, indeed. You did score 230 points tonight on your little Mighty Mouse Club. I scored 145 points for the Nelson family, and they were hard-earned points. Total point score right now is 915 for the Super Friends to 730 for the Nelson family. Next time points will count will be from the next pay-per-view event, which will be TNA Hardcore Justice coming up in just a couple weeks. And uh, in case you didn't know, David Hero, you got an extra 25 bonus points, did both you and I, for the winners on the Money in the Bank matchups tonight. Ah, very Overall, nice. $45, $55. This pay-per-view Money in the Bank, one that arguably WWE did not do an effective enough job selling on Monday Night Raw this past week, was it worth the money? Was it worth the money for ordering this pay-per-view, David Hero? Absolutely, hands down. This was a solid pay-per-view offering and definitely worth the uh, 45 or $35, whatever it is. And and to the point of the match placement, because a lot of people, when we sent out a tweet, or again, we're at PWR Show on Twitter, sent out a tweet asking people to show us or tell us if it bothered them that the WWE or World Heavyweight Championship match was not the top match on the card. Now, on a pay-per-view labeled Money in the Bank, can't you, shouldn't you have one of the title pay-per-view or one of the title matches, not championship, but title matches of the pay-per-view, be one of the, or be the last match of the pay-per-view event? Makes all sense in the world to me. Well, it, it does, it, it, you know, but it's if it wasn't John Cena, I think the fans could handle it. It would have been the SmackDown brand, but obviously they had a different plan for that, having... You know, Ziggler coming out and teasing the cash in with Sheamus just to show Sheamus' dominance and to make Ziggler look a little bit weak after winning that big match. Um, but it's it's all because of John Cena. At the end of the day, as much as the fans love Cena, they also can't stand him. How long does the show-off, the endorsed Dolph Ziggler, walk around with that briefcase before he makes it worthwhile and cashes it in to become the world heavyweight champion? I Three months, six something. months, one week? You, you know what? I I think what they should do with that is every time Sheamus looks vulnerable, just have Ziggler walk down to the ring and tease like he's going to cash it in. Make Sheamus 
almost paranoid, that he has to always be on his best, that he can't ever be weak. And mm -hmm. just tease it, tease it, and tease it, and tease it, so that when it finally does happen, it means <laughs> something. How long, though? Because I, I ask because I think the he thought until of Dolph Ziggler, I think the do thought of Dolph Ziggler walking around with this briefcase for months and taunting oh, and teasing it he's is not going to carry it. Vicky's going to have it in her hands. Well, even better, whatever. If, if he's got a gloating point. He's got something that uh, he could use as not just a prop, but something to prop him up and elevate him to the level he needs to be. That reaction for him tonight was a little surprising to me. Now I know fans have been behind been behind Dolph Ziggler for quite a while, but it was a little more prominent and prevalent than I thought it would be tonight. And let's not lose sight of the fact of how long they kept with the celebration of Ziggler winning that money in the bank briefcase. He hugged Vicky, she walked all the way out, held the briefcase up, and went through a replay scenario as well. All that matters. All that matters. They gave time they for his the same thing in. with Cena. The look on his face, him embracing it, kissing the briefcase, the whole thing. They made sure they got their point across that that briefcase means a ton. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, they did. Overall, I thought it was a solid pay-per-view show. Uh, I, I, I think that um, the winners make sense and will make sense, especially in the case of Cena, further down the road here, because we are next going to SummerSlam in August. And this is the, according to WWE, second biggest pay-per-view event of the year for them. And it looks like things are leaning towards John Cena, CM Punk. Maybe John Cena tells us on Raw tomorrow night or on Raw 1000 that he's going to cash in at SummerSlam because you, uh, I don't know what else he does if he doesn't cash in. And The Rock, I'm sorry, and uh, Brock Lesnar and Triple H, two big main event matchups, headlining matchups at SummerSlam, looks to be the direction we are going uh, for the next pay-per-view. Well, once again, in summary, Dolph Ziggler wins the SmackDown Money in the Bank briefcase. Sheamus retains the World Heavyweight Championship against Alberto Del Rio. A tease of a cash-in by Dolph Ziggler, which was thwarted by Sheamus. Primetime players are defeated by Primo and Epico. CM Punk retains the WWE Championship against Daniel Bryan. Ryback defeats Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins in a handicap matchup. In a six-diva tag match, Layla Kiglin and Tamina defeat Beth Phoenix, Natalia, and the endorsed Eve Marie. Torres. And the main event, John Cena, is the Money in the Bank winner on the Raw side of things, capturing that briefcase at the end of the night tonight on Money in the Bank on pay-per-view. I want to thank all of you for tuning in and joining us here on the post show. We'll be with you again live tomorrow night on the Meltdown, where we're going to have time to get to your phone calls. Uh, that'll be tomorrow, right after WWE Raw on the Meltdown. For David Hero and Linda Kay, this is Damian Nelson saying thank you so much for tuning in here to the Pro Wrestling Report. We'll see you tomorrow on Meltdown.